Hi, this is John Clements for the UMass Fruit Advisor. Today is Thursday, July 3rd, 2014. Um, I wanted to quickly show you, before the birds get all of them, this row of sweet cherries. It was, I think it's, boy, it might be five years old now, I can't remember exactly. It's probably at least five, maybe six. Um, it was planted on two different rootstocks, Gisela 3 and Gisela 5. Uh, trees are planted two feet apart to what um, Greg Lang loosely calls the super slender X, something like that, or it's, I, I kind of think of it as a super spindle cherry planting. Anyways, trees, this is Gisela 3 here, this first group, and um, this is Rainier. And um, we had a hard winter, but these Rainiers came through pretty good. And um, you will see some birds pecking there, but there's some pretty nice fruit in here. All this fruit is born um, on um, wood that's right fairly close to the trunk. The pruning is done to uh, keep the fruiting wood close to the trunk. See if I can get some cherries in some sun here so you can see. Um, yeah, getting to be pretty nice sized fruit. Again, this is Rainier on Gisela 3. And they had a pretty, pretty good yield through here. Here we go. Here's a nice little uh, group of them. And uh, nice, nice bunch of fruit there. I want to say they're not quite ready, but they're certainly edible, and the birds are starting to find them. So, anyway, to give you an idea uh, what how tall the trees are, they're you know probably about 10 to 11 feet tall. Um, they do take some pretty good pruning, and it takes a little while to prune these to keep them close to the trunk. But man, for um, a pick your own or um, a small farmer direct market that wants to grow cherries to bring to a farmer's market. This Gisela 3 looks really nice at this two foot spacing. I'm pretty pleased with it this year. It's yielded in the past too, but um, the crop looks very good this year. So that's Rainier on Gisela 3, and we'll go look at the next group of cherries. Next we have Skeena on Gisela 3. These have a really, really heavy yield here. It's very small right now, but these Skeenas, to my knowledge, are not quite ready yet. I'll try one here, but I have a hunch. Nah, they're pretty hard still. I'm not that familiar with Skeena. I believe it's from British Columbia. Um, but man, look at the cherries in here. If I can get these to size up, um, and uh, they're not ready to harvest for a couple weeks and can keep the birds off them. You notice there's no netting. These trees could be netted. No rain covers. I don't see much cracking yet, but it's been dry up to this point. But we'll start to get some cracking probably uh, with this recent rain we've had. At, uh, this is Skeena, a little dead wood in here, which I don't like. Um, very heavy yield, it looks like. If I can get these cherries to size up and mature, um, it'll be a really nice crop. And again, a very compact tree on this Gisela 3 rootstock. So um, this uh, Gisela 3 and this SSA Super Spindle Axe planting is really coming in nicely now. So that's Skeena on Gisela 3. Okay, now we have Benton. Benton on Gisela 5. And these Bentons have not really produced since I've had these on the ground. You can see the Gisela 5 is a much bigger tree. The Benton on Gisela 5 and the Skeena on Gisela 3 following down through the Rainier. I don't know. I don't think I'd like to grow this system on Gisela 5. I'd want to give these trees a little more space. There's a lot of vigor in here. Uh, pretty light crop. I think this Benton's probably a week or two away from harvest, but I can see a few fruit in there, mostly in the tops of the trees, that maybe are getting ripe. But you can see the bottom of the tree is pretty, uh, pretty sparse. I don't like this one. If this was my only experience with this system, I wouldn't like it. There's some, a uh, couple of pretty nice Bentons right here. Let's pick them off and see what they look like. Nice sized fruit. A little bit of maybe cracking and splitting going on there already. Uh, let's try one here. Hmm. Still got some tartness. Needs to develop some sugars. Fairly good size, but with this light crop load, I'd expect the cherries to be on the smaller side. Try another one. Ah. Not quite ripe still, but I don't like the, the yield here. Now this could have had some winter damage. It was a very cold winter here. It got down to minus 10 or 12, so 
The Rainier and Skeena look like winners, but I don't know about Benton. That's on Gisela 5 rootstock. We've got one more to look at. Okay, Ugg. This is Regina on Gisela 5. Now these trees were planted one year later than the rest of the trees, and I've had a problem with bacterial canker from day one on these Reginas. And I've lost trees. You can see the spacing here. I had to do some pretty heavy pruning on them. I've experimented with some copper sprays. Got a little phytotoxicity this spring. Um, in particular, I was using a, a Stoller product called Resist. Um, lots of good growth on them, but virtually no crop. I've not really been able to crop these Regina. Maybe it's lack of pollinators. You can see the vigor and the shoot growth. Um, again, planted two feet apart. On Gisela 5, there's a tree that got canker in the top of the tree and is all dead. I don't like these too much at all. Now, Regina is supposed to be, you know, one that doesn't split easily for us and stuff, but man, maybe it's my pollination situation. Maybe it was a cold winter. They're not that winter hardy. Um, I don't know that they're particularly susceptible to canker, but they sure do get bacterial canker. So that's Regina on Gisela 5, and that's the last one. Just to sum it up, I really liked um, the Rainier does very well in the Gisela 3 rootstock as does the Skeena and um, on this super slender axe and that's probably the type of system I would go with. Okay, that's enough. John Clements for the UMass Fruit Advisor and uh, we'll get some of these cherries picked this weekend.